Hey everyone, this is Joanne coming to you live from New York. I'm also known as hashtag unicorn boss. So as you guys are jumping online tonight, go ahead and hit me up with some unicorn emojis because those are my jam. If you're grabbing me live, go ahead and leave me a number one. And if you're catching me on the replay, go ahead and leave me a number two. So super t excited tonight, you guys. Uh, on Wednesday, I usually do keto tips and tricks for you all and we do what, what I like to call a win it Wednesday. So I wanted to chat a little bit tonight about the keto flu, what it is, what it means, how you can help to prevent it and all of the details because I've been getting a lot of questions lately, especially from brand new people that are on the keto journey and they're starting to experience some of the symptoms of the keto flu. So I thought this would be a great topic for win it Wednesday. So I hope that you guys are enjoying it tonight. So if you're grabbing me live, go ahead and leave me a number one. And if you catch me on the replay go ahead and leave me a number two by the way if you're a brand new friend don't forget to comment new below so that way we can circle back around and connect with you and if we're not friends yet please go ahead and send a fraud and request and hit follow so even those of you that have been following me for some time now make sure you go ahead and click on my face it'll take you over to my page and then from there you can click the follow button uh, it was broken on my page for a while and it is working now so I'm trying to get my followers up so that would mean the world to me if you went ahead and did that and showed me some love so and by the way, if you're keto, uh, don't forget to go ahead and con comment keto below and let me know how long you've been on the journey. If you're brand new to me, welcome. My name is Joanne. I've been keto since October. I'm down about 60 pounds and I'm just loving this lifestyle and I'm really enjoying uh, sharing the whole journey with you and helping you all uh, just take this take this keto by the horns. Like, let's get it. So <laughs> awesome. Let me say hi to a few people real quick and then we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to be talking about the keto flu tonight. So start thinking about your questions about the keto flu because I'm sure you have a ton of them. I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately. So I thought this would be great to chit chat about tonight for our win it Wednesday. So hi, Bethany. Hi, D. Hey, Marja. Uh, who else we got? Patricia, Maddie, Lacey, Susan. Welcome. Hi, everybody. So How's, how's hump day treating you all? How's Wednesday doing? Happy Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> I'm all about getting to Friday, you guys. So we're, the work week is going pretty smoothly here so far. So let's go ahead and chit chat about the keto flu. So have you ever heard of the keto flu before? If you have, go ahead and comment with a yes below because I would be curious to know how many of you guys even know what I'm talking about. And then we're going to keep going from there. So I'm going to wait a minute to see if I see any yeses. Hi, Kaylee. Thanks for popping on. Hi, Nell. Let me wave at a few people while I wait for the yeses to come through. So have, are you guys experienced at all with the keto flu? Do you know what it's about, um, what it means or anything? So I'm seeing some no's. Okay, so that's good. Maybe you'll learn a few things here. Anybody at all? Yeah, so somebody's commenting how I'm getting my last few minutes last few waves in there to people brand new that are jumping on. So Patricia says it's horrid. Lacey's familiar. Okay, great. So I'm glad that there's a few of you on that know a little bit about the keto flu. So um, have you ever had the keto flu? If you had it, go ahead and comment flu below. And I'd be one of the ones commenting flu. So I, I did have a little case of the keto flu. So I will share with you what it felt like for me, um, what the symptoms are so you can spot it right away. Because the greatest thing about the keto flu is the biggest secret of all is that you can prevent it. So recognizing the symptoms and knowing the key straight off is a really great way to take charge of your keto journey, especially in the very beginning. So in the beginning, I'm kind of getting sidetracked right now, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> in the beginning, a lot of people quit their keto journey because they experience the flu and they don't know what it is and so this is why this is so important to share about for our topic tonight so Patricia's had the flu I feel you girl okay great so um and I was just curious if you think you have the keto flu now and you're brand new keto I would love for you to comment now below um so that way I can make sure I can swing back through later and give you some special attention and some love and maybe send you a private message and help you out so if you think you have the keto flu now and you're feeling sick um make sure you don't forget to comment now so that way like I said I can check on you and make sure you're okay so what is the keto flu essentially um, as your body starts to change and you begin your keto journey you're basically uh, switching the way your body functions and I talk about this a lot usually on Tuesdays for my transformation Tuesday and by the way quick side note I missed it this week you guys um, I was chit chatting with a friend on the phone last night and uh, life kind of took over so I owe you uh, my health story this week I will make sure I get it in for you guys maybe tomorrow night I'm gonna do cooking and maybe I'll do maybe I'll do a quick share on my story as well but I normally talk about the way your body functions um, 
when you're either running off of glucose or you're running off of ketones. So the whole idea of the ketogenic diet is that you're getting your body into ketosis, into a fat burn state, and you're basically using fat as a source of fuel, which is amazing because that's how uh, people lose so much weight. So if you would love to uh, go ahead and share, comment below and let me know how much weight you've lost so, so far on the keto journey. I would love to give you a shout out, but that's what makes keto so special is that you get into this fat burn state and your body basically becomes a fat burning machine. So before, you know, just a normal lifestyle of just like living and eating is that your body runs off of glucose as a for source of fuel, which is sugar essentially. So, you know, I don't know about you guys, but you know, I'm in my mid thirties. So, um, you know, my body has been running off of sugar for a really long time, you guys. So just the whole idea of beginning to start to switch your diet where you're taking out those carbohydrates, you're taking out the sugar and the glucose, you're your body is kind of like shocked. It's kind of like jump starting a car. And um, it can be it can be a difficult transition. So if you're feeling some of these symptoms of the keto flu, just know that it's normal and that you will make it through this and that it's actually a good thing because the keto flu is essentially your body is just getting ready to purge the toxins and start fresh and be made new essentially. I don't know, not really. I'm kind of exaggerating, but that's the way I felt. I feel like my body was like almost being born again and I was just running like a well-oiled machine machine and it feels incredible. Um, that's why so many people stay keto even though sometimes it's hard is because it feels amazing. So congrats to Savannah. She says she's down 24 pounds. High five sister. I love it. Hi Joni. Hi Shauna. Welcome. So that's basically all the, uh, the keto flu is. So nothing too scary. Nothing you have to be freaking out about. I'm in a lot of the keto groups and they're like everyone is such in a panic and so scared of the keto flu and it's really not that serious. It's really just your body detoxing and you're switching over and you're teaching your body to use fat as a source of fuel. So because um, we do have sugar that's been rampant in our systems for so long, I don't know about you guys, but I was definitely addicted to sugar. So if you feel free to share here, um, you can go ahead and just comment addicted and maybe just share what one of your vices was. Mine was Mountain Dew. I was super addicted to sugar and Mountain Dew was like my craze. It was the caffeine, it was the sugar, um, whenever I needed a pick me up or, and I just, I loved the taste of it. And it's so funny now, cause I haven't had to had soda in so long. I took a sip the other day and I don't even like it anymore, which is hysterical because I used to drink like, you know, sometimes anywhere from five to eight sodas a day. So I was truly addicted to the sugar and to the caffeine and to the soda. So, um, so when you're drinking, that much or eating that much sugar, um, of course, if you start eliminating it from your diet, you're going to go through a detox. And what happens is your body, um, there is a bacteria that can run rampant in your uh, gut and it's called candida and candida feeds off of sugar. So um, when you have too much candida in your system, it can actually make you really sick. And there's a whole slew of symptoms that you can experience, which is part of the keto flu as well. Um, so as you switch over and you're, you stop eating those sugary and those carbohydrates and all of those things, the candida actually starts to die in your system. And that's a good thing. We want that candida to die. We want to keep good bacteria in our gut, but we do want to purge the ones that are kind of taking over and making us sick. So... So yeah, oh, thank you so much for the share, Nora. By the way, I forgot to mention in the beginning, you guys, thank you so much. If you enjoy my page and you have a lot of fun here and you learn lots of great things about keto, please go ahead and give this video a quick share. I so appreciate your love and support. So, so that's the background of why we start to feel sick. Um, so let's see here. I'm just looking at my notes. Totally lost track. Um, so yeah. Okay, so I pretty much, I did that all ad lib and I got through everything on my notes, which is really amazing because I thought I for sure I would miss something. So hopefully you guys understand a little bit better about what the keto flu is and how it works and everything. So I want to talk about the symptoms right now. So that way you can recognize it. So let's talk about the symptoms and real quickly, I will share a little bit about my story. Um, I wonder if we should go over the symptoms first. So when I was brand new keto, I kind of just jumped in and I had no idea what I was doing essentially. And um, I thought I was going to be great at it because I used to count, uh, uh, calories. So I thought I had a really good hand on food and what it looked like and, and things like that. Um, but I truly had no idea. So about my third, I would say my second or third day um, into my first week of going keto, I started to feel sick. 
So for me, the symptom was super dizzy. I felt really dizzy and disconnected. I felt like almost a little nauseous. So those types of things. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about feeling nauseous, having heart palpitations, um, feeling confused, um, sick. Sometimes your, your digestive tract can, can get out of whack. So if you've had the keto flu, feel free to go ahead and share what some of your symptoms were. Because what I found and what I love so much about this journey is that it's different for everybody. So um, let me see if I can see a, a few comments go through. And then I've got a list here of some of the symptoms that you may recognize when you first start to experience the keto flu. And remember, this is just your body purging that sugar, purging all of that bad bacteria and everything. Your body starts to switch over. And it's not instant. It usually takes about a week, um, especially if you stick to it. So if you start to do well, like I'll share a quick story. I recently went on vacation and I'm one of these people that I believe in balance. So while I do do strict keto for the majority of my my journey here, um, you know, on a vacation, I'm, I'll be real with you guys. I, I don't stay keto. I take a break from it for a little while and I have some fun and I eat some fun foods and um, I'm all about balance. So, and I think that I'm more successful in my journey because I allow that. But in the beginning, I think it's super important that like that first month, you really, really stick to it because you start to build that new muscle almost. You're building that muscle memory and you're ensuring that you're sticking to it and that you're not uh, getting sidetracked. And it really helps to build that muscle memory. So yeah, Juan said he had constipation. And it's funny because some people actually experience the opposite. Some people get... Um, uh, stomach irritability or maybe even experience diarrhea. So um, yeah, it can go either way. Um, insomnia, really struggling to sleep, brain fog, um, drowsiness, feeling tired and lethargic all of the time, fatigue, um, dizziness. That was a big one for me. Dizziness and nausea um, was all something that was really, really tough for me. Um, you can also have additional muscle cramps. You can feel confused, um, potentially headaches. So feeling weak and feeling shaky. I definitely had that shaky feeling my first week of keto. So what luckily I was in a really great support group. So on my like my second or third day, I reached out to some of the girls in the group and I was like, I'm feeling really, really dizzy and that's like a not a normal thing for me. And they were like, oh my gosh, you're going through keto flu. It's totally normal. Go get yourself some water with electrolytes. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is funny. Quick story about me is that I don't like buying bottled water. I don't know. I'm just one of those people like I try to uh, I care about the planet and I just think all of that extra plant all that extra plastic in our system like I just don't think we need it at all so I usually just do my own filtered water at home but um, when I realized that I wasn't getting what I needed I went out and I picked up uh, a good quality water that had electrolytes in it and like instantly almost from drinking that I felt better so yeah I'm seeing some really great comments here so thanks for sharing um, Bad headache, wanting to vomit, nausea, fatigue, diarrhea, feeling weak and shaky. So yeah, these are all of the things. So if you're experiencing them right now, the good news is there is hope at the end of the tunnel. You can definitely get past this hump. So make sure you go out and get yourself some really good uh high quality water with electrolytes. Uh, try to stay away from any drinks that have like those chemical sugars in them and things like that because they can actually trigger an insulin response. So even though technically it's sugar free, your body could potentially see that as sugar and react adversely to it. So um, the other thing is, and I meant to grab it, but I know I shared it on my last video where um, I did a fasting video and I talked about the importance of fasting and um, some of the ways to kind of get through that, and that's to increase your electrolytes. So you can get like a fine grade Himalayan salt and you can sprinkle that into your waters as well. And make sure you're adding pink Himalayan salt to all of your foods. It's a natural electrolyte. It's full of minerals. So as your body is kind of purging all of these toxins, it will really help you to ensure that you're getting back in what your body is losing which is really important. You could also feel free to get yourself um, an electrolyte supplement. That's not something I know very much about at all. I just get overwhelmed. There's so many choices out there. So I didn't actually do it myself, but I find that through the waters and through um, the pink Himalayan salt, I get most of the electrolytes I need. Um, I would encourage definitely adding on a magnesium supplement as well, maybe potassium. So, but that we could talk about that on another, another video for sure. 
Okay, so those are all the symptoms. So typically lasts for a week. And I wanna talk about now some of the ways that you can uh, help to cure the flu. So for those of you that have experienced it, what were some of your favorite ways? I know I talked about the pink Himalayan salt and the electrolytes. Uh, Jody said she likes to use Powerade Zeros. So I'm not sure what's in that, but as long as it's not the fake chemical sugar, you're probably okay. Um, but yeah, what are some of your favorite ways to, to treat the keto flu? So while I'm waiting for the comments to pop through, I think I started to tell my story and I got such sidetracked. I'm a little bit of a hot mess tonight, you guys. I don't know why. Super excited to chit chat with you all because it's been a few days. But um, when I came back from my vacation and kind of taking a few days to enjoy myself, when I switched back over to the strict keto, um, on my like second day, I started to experience the pains of the keto flu again. I was like, wow, I just find the body to be so fascinating and that just after a short period of time like that, that, you can already need to reset yourself which is crazy so Jamie said she has terrible headaches on the keto flu so yeah I feel you sister the water with your electrolytes with your Himalayan salt will really help with that so let's go over a few more things that you can do to help um, ease the pain of the keto flu because it is preventable and I will say one thing that's really cool about my journey was once somebody brought it to my attention and once I added in the Himalayan salt and the water with the electrolytes, I, I immediately reversed those symptoms of the keto flu. So it went away, it stopped. I only kind of had it for a few days, um, which was really, really exciting. So Stacy says she drank pickle juice to help. And that's a great, actually, I don't even have that on my list. So I'm so glad that you mentioned it because pickle juice is really good for you on keto and that's something you can definitely do. And I will say, make sure it's a pickle juice that's not, um, doesn't have sugar in it. So you know, it needs to be like a dill pickle. Make sure you're not doing like a butter, um, what do they call that, bread and butter pickles or sweet gherkins or anything like that. None of those will work because they're full of sugar, so. Hair loss isn't potentially from the keto flu itself. Um, keto flu is more flu-like symptoms, but some people do um, potentially experience hair loss. Uh, that's really more diet-wise. It depends on what you're eating. So, um, so beyond water, electrolytes, and Himalayan salt, uh, one of the great ways to help combat the keto flu is to increase your healthy fats. So eat more fat. Um, the magic of keto, it's about getting into that state of ketosis, like I was saying, that fat burn state and remember it takes fat to burn fat so I tell people all of the time don't be um, don't be afraid to eat the fat and I know it's so hard to kind of reprogram your mind but you really want to make sure that you're getting high fat in because otherwise you're just low carb and if low carb and if that's your goal that's totally okay but if you're looking to do keto your fats really have to be the highest thing on your macro set and for me I need to be up over 100 grams of fat in order to be successful in my keto keto journey. That's what really works to me. So, aw, thanks for the love, Rob. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, the second tip is we already talked about adding in more electrolytes. And the third tip I actually mentioned as well, avoid sugar-free things because the sugar-free things, um, really just your body treats them like sugar. So it's not good. The fourth thing is really important. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep will help your body to recover as it's kind of purging out all of those toxins and you start to uh, reset yourself to be successful on your keto journey. Uh, number five, I really love, and it talks about movement. So you want to start moving your body, and I talk about this all the time, especially when I'm fasting, and I do like usually like an extend, extended fast. I do a 60-hour fast every month. So if you guys love to fast, go ahead and comment 60 below, and I'm actually uh, getting ready to finalize for another 60-hour fast this month. We're going to be starting in uh, on the 16th, so really exciting, so I can get you some information if you're curious. But the whole point of saying that was when I'm fasting, I force myself to move, get up, take a walk, do a, a light uh, walk outside or get on the treadmill or, you know, take the dog for a walk, whatever it is that you do. Um, movement is so important to get the blood flowing. And it really, I just find that it helps your body to purge those toxins and kind of get them right out of your system. So it feels really, really good, and it will definitely help you to recover from any keto flu symptoms. Of course, number six is to drink more water. 
Number seven actually on the list is really surprising, to eat more calories, which I know sounds so wrong. Like if honestly, if you're on a health journey, you're probably in it to uh, be losing weight, but you can definitely uh, eat more calories when you're going through this transitionary period and the calories should always come from high quality fats. So things like avocados, um, what else? I mean, egg is kind of like a protein, really, but I find that it also helps me. Um, you know, uh, coconut oil, MCT oil, things like that. Nice, high, healthy fats, olive oil. Um, and of course, they have more calories, so they're good for you. And eat some more clean carbohydrates. So things like veggies, um, salads, cucumbers, green peppers, all of those types of things can really give you some nice, high fiber and sustenance to help push you through some of those those really awful symptoms that you're feeling um, on your keto journey so and I saw I love the comment Rob he likes to do Pokemon Go I used to be such a fan of that game like had such a big following on it and I kind of fell out of it once it gets hot here in New York I don't like to walk around in the blazing heat but um, I do love to be outside so um, hopefully you guys learn some great new tips and tricks about um, the keto flu so hopefully now you know what to recognize and you know why you're feeling that way. And like I said, as people are transitioning and they're beginning this brand new journey, they get really excited about it. And what happens is sometimes people get violently ill. When you take a body that's been addicted to sugar for over 30 years and then all of a sudden you shock it into this new system, it's it's difficult. Your body really does go into a shocking process and you can feel really, really sick. So as long as you know what you're looking for and as long as you know that these things are totally preventable, you can definitely get over the hump of the keto flu and um, make sure you stay um, dedicated and successful on your keto journey. So if you guys have any questions about the keto flu or anything that I missed while we were chit-chatting tonight, feel free to go ahead and leave me a comment here in the comments. And if you want to join me on the 60 hour fast it's coming up soon so don't forget to go ahead and comment with a 60 and what was the other thing oh I was gonna first I said earlier on in the video but for those of you that are just joining me now if you think you have the keto flu now just go ahead and comment now below because I would love to reach out to you and send you a private message and see what we can do to help you start feeling better so thank you all so much for joining me tonight have a good one and we'll be back on my page tomorrow to do a great keto kitchen thanks take care